Hi guys, welcome to Sasha K Creations. Today I want to share with you this handbag I made for some of my craft supplies. I am sorry, I am going totally out of frame here. Um, but if you like me, like to go to scrap meetings, then it's nice to have something handy to put some of your supplies in. And on the sides, I have some big expandable pockets. They're big enough to hold a pack of tags or maybe some journaling cards or die cuts. And both of them closes with a magnet. On the front, I have a sticker with some foam tape underneath. And then I have this cool closure that I found in my stash. And this is how you open it up. I really wish that I had made the straps a little longer, maybe three to four inches. But it still works, so it's not that bad. This is what it looks like on the inside. It has a tray that you can take out and then it has this big pocket. And this also fits um, maybe some stamps or tags, cards, whatever. And inside the front, I have another pocket. This is a little smaller than the other one and then again, I have this tray that I can take out. It's hold in place by some of the buttons from the chipboards. And under that, there's a big room for some of your scissors or bigger stuff. And under that, I have these three smaller rooms with some ribbon inside them. I'll show you what they do in a minute. Um, when I had the idea to make this um, handbag, at first I just wanted to make something to store all of my new ink pads in. And then I just kind of went from there. But this is how it works. I take two ink pads and then I just push them against the ribbon. And the little tab will be in front of the ink pads. Whoops. There you go. And the last one. See now, I have these three tabs in front of the ink pads and then I can pull on them and the ink pads will come out. So I don't have to struggle trying to get them out. I wanted the ink pads to be hold and into place. So I made the rooms as tight as possible. And of course you could still get them out without the ribbon, but it's a little easier that way. Now I'll just show you what, um, what else they can fit. Like I said, I have my scissors that I would like to bring to the scrap meetings and a corner punch. Of course, some glossy accents. I use that a lot. And then I can put in the tray here in between the buttons. And this can hold a couple of glue bottles, an ink tool, my, um, my pencils and knives and stuff, and my acrylic black and of course a bone folder we need that and in the small pocket in the front i can put in some of my favorite dies i store all my dies on a magnetic sheet in a plastic pocket and this could easily fit a couple of more sheets um, this closes up with a couple of magnets like so I totally forgot to mention that I made this with chipboard and the uh, Couture DCE from Graphic 45. Perfect for a handbag. But the big pocket can hold some stamps, um, some journaling cards, some die cuts. It has plenty of room, so of course we also need um, a roll of score tape. And maybe some of the big tags, they also fit in here. And again, I wish I had made my straps a little longer because it is a little difficult for me to close the, the bag again. It is durable, but I recommend that you give it a couple of more inches to make it easier. I also have a couple of magnets in here, but they don't really do much, so you don't have to add those. I was just afraid that it might be a little floppy without them, but it's not. The side pockets can fit a pack of tags. It can also fit the, the square tags if you prefer those. Or maybe some ribbon. This is what I used for the bag. 
I am very much in love with this. I think it turned out great. And I hope you like it too. I will just go through all of the materials and then we can get started. First of all, you of course need the Couture DCE from Graphic 45. It comes with chipboards and two sticker sheets. And then you'll need a pack of black chipboard. The tag, pocket and butterfly dies. The classic black ink pad. Some black cardstock. And black leather paper. Some type of closure, preferably vintage looking, and some brads. Um, some one millimeter magnets. I think I use 10. Some glue. I use book binders. Some score tape and some foam tape. And also this pack of black trim. And then you'll need something to cut your paper and chipboard. I use these two. A scoreboard and a bone folder, a ruler, scissors, a pencil, and I also used a 10 millimeter corner rounder. The first thing we're going to do is cut all of our chipboard pieces. In the description below, there is a list with all the cuttings. There is also a list with all the materials. And I gave all of the chipboard pieces letters. And I do recommend that you write um, all the letters on the pieces so you know which one is which. I'm starting out with all the pieces for the box itself. And then later I will cut out the pieces I need for the pockets. Just so I don't have too much um, at the same time and I believe that I cut into four maybe five sheets of chipboard you don't of course have to cut them in alphabetic order it's better to get as much out of the chipboard as possible now you should have one A two B's two C's one D one E one F three G's one H two I's and two J's. Now you're gonna get out your cardstock. So we're gonna make the thingies that are gonna hold all the chipboard pieces together and start cutting up a lot of strips at one inch. And I think I used five or six sheets of cardstock for this. So just make a lot of strips and then score them in the middle at half an inch, all of them. Then add a strip of score tape um, between the score line and the edge on both sides, like so. And continue to do that on all the other strips. And be sure to burnish all of the strips of score tape with your bone folder. Then fold the strips at the score lines, some of them with the tape out and some of them with the tape inside. Then take the A piece from your chipboard, that is the bottom. Then you're going to need your ruler and a pencil, and we're going to make some lines where we want some of the other pieces to be. So start by measuring half an inch from the edges on both ends. Then you're going to measure three inches from one of those marks and make a new mark. And again, measure three inches from that mark and make another mark and then there should be three inches between the last two marks now do the same thing on the other side so you can connect all the marks and make some straight lines like so and you should end up with four lines Now on one side, measure four inches from one edge and make some marks. And again, connect all of those into a straight line, like so. And then take the two B pieces. They need to be placed here and here. Now take one of the score tape strips you made and cut four pieces at four inches. 
Take one strip and remove one side of the anti stick and add a thin line of glue over and under the score tape, like so. Then place that so the other side is facing down and take the C piece and push it up against the glue so it sticks to the bottom of the C piece. And burnish that with your bone folder. Take another strip, remove the anti stick bits, add the glue over and under the score tape, and then place that on the other side of the C piece, also at the bottom. Make sure it's stuck, and then burnish again. Now remove the other two anti stick pieces. And add some glue and place that on one of the lines in the middle of the chipboard as close to the edge as you can and burnish with your bone folder and wipe off any excess glue with a cloth. And then do the same thing with the other piece. Pull on a square tape strip on each side of the C piece at the bottom. And again, add some glue and place that piece on the other line. And burnish with your bone folder. Now take the D that goes on top of the C pieces. Make some more of the 4 inch strips and glue those onto the top of the C piece with, um, with the other side of the tape pieces um, facing up like this remember to burnish with your bone folder and of course do that to both of the C pieces now you're going to take the F piece that is supposed to go behind the C pieces like so and then make a couple of the score tape strips as tall as the C pieces, and they are one and a half inches. Add some glue and place those um, on the side of the C piece and on the other one. And these pieces need to go on the ends that are in the middle of the bottom and not at the edge. And this is what it should look like now. I really hope that you can see what I'm doing. Now take the F. Actually the D and F are exactly the same size. So either one of them. And cut a strip of square tape um, in the same length as the pieces. Add some glue and place that on the bottom of the piece and burnish with your bone folder and wipe off any excess glue. Now peel off the anti-stick pieces on the ends of the C pieces and add some glue and place the F piece up against the C pieces with the tape at the bottom facing away and burnish the small pieces now remove the anti stick from the bottom and add your glue and press that down. Use your bone folder to burnish and wipe off any excess glue. Now take the D piece and cut another strip of score tape. Add your glue and place that on the bottom. Press the D piece up against the glue and burnish. Now remove all of the anti stick pieces from the C pieces and add some glue to those as well. Now place your D piece on top of those with the score tape against the F piece and make sure that it all lines up in the front and try to burnish with your bone folder. Now remove the anti stick strip from the D piece and add your glue and press that up against the F piece. 
Now take the E piece and another strip. Add your glue to the strip and place that at the bottom of the E piece. Add your glue to the other side of the strip and place that piece so it lines up with all the edges and burnish. Now we're going to take another strip and place on the outside. We're going to make a mark where the C pieces are going and make a small cut to make room for the C pieces. Add your glue to the side that you didn't cut in and place that at the bottom of the E piece, like so. Burnish and peel off um, the anti stick pieces um, one piece at a time. Add your glue and fold those into the small rooms between the C pieces. Do that with all of them. And remember to burnish and wipe off any excess glue. Now we're going to add the B pieces at the ends. So you need to put a strip of score tape under the D piece with the other side of the tape strips facing out. And you're going to do that on both ends. Now you should have something that looks like this. So we're going to take one of the B pieces and add a strip of score tape at the bottom that is one of the short sides. Then add your glue to the strip under the D piece and add some glue on the piece at the bottom of the B piece. Now place that piece on the bottom up against the end. And make sure that all of it lines up. And then do the same thing with the other side. Add a tape strip at the bottom. Add some glue to the strip under the D piece. And the other side of the tape on the B piece. And place that piece at the, um, on the bottom up against the end. Now make some smaller pieces for the corners. You're going to start with the outside of the corners. And like with the other pieces, you're going to glue down one side at a time. And remember to burnish in the other side. Make sure everything is in place. And press that down. And burnish. Now do the other corners. Remember to burnish. Now the other corners, we're going to put um, a strip kind of inside. So make sure that it is not too long or too short. This is good. Now make one more. Add your glue and place that in the corner. Like so. Same thing in the other corner. Remember to burnish and wipe off any excess glue. Now we're going to do the inside. So get some small strips that fits inside. They can't be too long. And place those in each corner and burnish. And of course, remove any excess glue. And continue to do that in all four corners. Then you're going to do the bottom of the inside. Like so. And the other side. Burnish and wipe off excess glue. And this is what it should look like now. This is the back. This is the inside. This is the front, upside down, but still... And this is the bottom and the sides. And now you're going to make the little tray that goes on top of the insides. So you'll need the H for the bottom and the G pieces, the I's and the J's. 
Start with a G piece and add a tape strip to the bottom with the other side um, tape facing down and burnish. Then do the same thing with another G piece. Add some glue to the other side of the tape and place that on top of the H piece. And do that on both sides and burnish. Now you have the sides on your removable box. So we're just going to add another strip on the outside corner like so. And do that on both sides as well. Make sure that it grabs both pieces and burnish with your bone folder. Now you can add the ends and that is the eye pieces. Add a tape strip on each of the short sides. Then glue one side at a time onto the sides of the box. It's easiest if you turn the box upside down. Then all of the sides um, will line up at the top. Remember to burnish and wipe off any excess glue. Now you just need to add a strip on the outside corner and burnish again. Then another strip on the inside. I hope you can see what I'm doing. And then a small strip in each corner on the inside, like so. And that was one end. Now you just need to do the exact same thing with the other end. Now you're going to glue in the pieces inside and we're going to start with the two J's. Add a small strip on each side of the bottom with the other sides of the tape facing down like this now you can decide how much space you want in between your pieces i'm placing the first one here about three inches from the edge grab another j piece add your tape strips to both sides Add your glue to the bottom and place that inside the box. I'm placing mine two inches from the other piece. And burnish. And now the last G piece. Add a strip at the bottom, only on one side this time. Add your glue and place that up against the J pieces. And burnish. Now you need a ton of small strips to add in each corner on the inside. And of course, remember to burnish every single piece. There should be 12 pieces plus the four we already added before. And this is what you should have now. As you can see, the removable box is the exact same size as the one underneath so it's not gonna fall down this is the front of the box with all the rooms for the ink pads and the back and the sides and this is of course the insides now you're gonna need some pockets and we're gonna start with the big ones in the front and the back so again you need to cut out all of your chipboard pieces and there is a list below with all the measurements and for these two pockets you need all the pieces from k to q and then we're going to do some die cutting on piece l and m and those are the pockets and i use the tag die to do these Place the top of the die um, in the middle of your pocket and run it through your machine. Then you should have something that looks like this. 
and I did use a ruler to make sure that it was in the middle but I just kind of eyeballed how far in I wanted it but you want to do that to both pocket pieces so now they have a little more detail now you need to make a pile for each pocket L, O and P go together and M, M and Q go together and let's start with the small pocket you need to round one corner um, on each P piece and I used the 10 millimeter corner punch to do this then put a tape strip at the bottom of the M piece with the other side um, tape facing down and burnish. Glue the other side of the tape strip onto the O piece, that is the long thin piece. Now place a strip at the bottom of one of the K pieces, that is the long side. Again, tape facing down and burnish. And this part can be a little tricky, but glue the other side onto the O piece. And try to burnish without opening it up too much. Then place a tiny strip of tape at the bottom of the sides, and those are the P pieces. Um, you should do it um, in that end without the round corner. Add some glue to the other side and place that at the bottom of the pocket with the round corner on the same side as the die cut piece. And try to burnish. Then add a strip on the outside of the pocket. And stick that onto the side. And then do the same thing on the other side of the pocket. And remember the end with the round corner should be on the same side as the die cut piece. And be sure to burnish every piece you glue on. Now you're going to add a couple of strips on the corners in the back. And you're going to start by gluing one side of the tape strips onto the sides and burnish. Same thing on the other side, glue it onto the side before closing up the pocket. Then you'll have room enough to go in with your bone folder and burnish. And now you can glue the other side of the tape strips on the back of the pocket. And the other one, that is the hardest. Now place a strip from the bottom to the back and burnish. And then do another one from the bottom to the front and burnish again. And you want that one to be a little longer so it can grab the sides as well. Then you're going to make a cut at the score lines on the pieces sticking out. And then just take off the pieces on the bottom. Then add a little glue and tuck those small bits onto the sides. Add some glue to the bottom and burnish that. And that was one pocket, now we can do the other one. It's almost exactly the same, but these pieces are a little bit bigger. This time I decided to glue the sides together with the bottom first. You should round the corners on your sides before doing this. I forgot, but I'm going to do it after. And the other side. And now the corners. Again, I'm using the 10 millimeter, And remember to do them on the same side. Like so. And then you can add a strip from the back to the bottom on the inside and the inside of the front and glue that into the bottom of the pocket 
And again, try to burnish without opening it up too much. Now add a piece on each of the bottom corners. And the other one. And burnish. Then add a strip to each of the front corners. Burnish again. And now the back corners. And the other one. And burnish. Now you just need a strip on the front bottom and on the back bottom. And now you have two pockets, one for the front of the bag and one for the back. So now we just need to do the side pockets. And for those, we're going to need a little more chipboard. We're going to need four pieces that are six by six and two pieces that are six by half an inch. They are also in the list below as R and S. And then you're going to need two pieces of cardstock that measure six by eleven and a half. And I didn't have any 12 by 12, so I just used these instead. And then you're going to make some score lines at every three quarters of an inch. Then you're going to flip it over and make some more score lines in between all of those. And do that to both pieces of cardstock. Now you should have something that looks like this. Cut those in the middle so you have four pieces. And start pinching it together at all of the score lines. If you'd rather fold it, it's fine, but I think the pinching is easier. Your pieces should look something like this. You want five hills on each of them. And then a little excess paper on each side so you have something to add your glue on. If you think that you have too much extra, then of course you can just cut it off. I also ended up cutting some off mine. But do that with all four pieces. Get out your tag die again and take two of the R's. Take the top of die and place it in the middle of a side and run it through your machine and do that to both pieces and now you have these two put them in a pile for each pocket with another r and two of the harmonicas and an s and we're gonna put them together like this you start with gluing the tape onto the bottom piece. Then put it together with the front piece. Put another strip inside the bottom and put that together with the back piece, like so. Then place a strip of score tape on each hinge on the small harmonicas. And burnish. And do that to both of them. Then you're going to peel off one of the anti-stick strips and add some glue. And you're going to place that outside the front of the pocket. In burnish. Same thing with the other one. And I should say that you want all of the folds to be inside the pocket. So make sure that you get the chipboard all the way into the folds. I really hope you know what I mean. Now press all of the folds down and close the pocket. So only the hinge is sticking out. Do one side at a time. It's, it's hard if you try to do both of them. Add your glue to the hinge and fold that over the back of the pocket. And burnish. Same thing on the other side. Press all of those folds in there and flip over the hinge and burnish. Then place a strip of tape from back to the bottom and burnish. Then add another strip from front to bottom and burnish again. 
And that was one of the side pockets. Now you just have to do the same thing with the other one. And whoop to do now you have to. And this is what you should have now. In part two, we're going to make it pretty and put all of it together. I hope you are enjoying this tutorial so far. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified about my upcoming videos. Happy crafting!